right, today's lesson is about performing operations with complex numbers. Um, complex numbers, to, um, just to give your um, thought process, um, the complex numbers have to do with imaginary numbers. You're going to see an I. Anytime you see the word complex, you're looking at an I, um, and that stands for imaginary numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about some of the vocab that you're going to see within this lesson. So the vocabulary. The first thing is the imaginary unit. All right, the imaginary unit is, um, is I equaling the square root of a negative one. The reason why we have to use imaginary is because you cannot find a square root of a negative number. And so what we do instead is we go ahead and rewrite that as a complex number. Um, complex number. And the complex number is um, written in standard form as A plus BI. And this I right here comes from this square root of a negative one. Anytime you see a negative inside of a radical sign, automatically go ahead and move, um, make an I. The I goes on the outside and what that I does is it takes away the negative. All right, again, a complex number is A plus B I, where A and B, where A and B are real numbers. Um, and A um, is the real part. And B is the imaginary part. And what that means is that um, the imaginary part is letting you know that that was what was originally part of your negative um, inside your radical. The uh, next is the actual complex, um, the imaginary number. The imaginary number. And um, that is a complex number again in A plus B I form when B does not equal zero. All right, so B cannot equal zero in a complex number. Um, the next is a complex conjugate. A conjugate is simply the opposite operation. All right, so for a complex conjugate, Again, we have A plus B I, so the conjugate of it, we would change the operation of addition to subtraction, so A minus B I, and that is a complex conjugate. The um, complex plane the complex plane is when you graph it, um, the, con the the X, what we would consider the X is your A. All right, so your A um, is where you move horizontal. So um, you move left or right. And then your B, uh, move up or down. Move up or down. All right, so that's in your complex plane. Again, your A moves left or right, your B is up or down. And then the last thing is the absolute value of a complex number. It is found when you do the square root of A squared plus um, B squared. And that's how you will find the absolute value of your complex number. So here is all the vocab that we are going to be working with. 
on this um, lesson today of performing operations with complex numbers. The first concept we want to talk about um, under the performing the operations with complex numbers is the square root of a negative number. There are two properties. The first property um, says that if R um, is a positive real number, then the square root of a negative R is um, equal to I square root R. So an example would be that if I wanted to do the square root of a negative 3, again, when, um, when we were talking about the vocabulary for this lesson, I made a point of saying anytime you see a negative in a radical, what you do is you immediately put an I and square root 3 because that I gets rid of that negative under the radical sign. So the second property um, is to uh, my property one. Um, we can say that um, the um, I square root R squared equals a negative R. So again, an example, we're, we're going to go ahead and use our negative 3 uh, that we found up here. We have I square root 3, which is what we found up here, squared, is the same as saying I squared, I squared um, times 3, which gives you a negative 3. Because, again, it becomes a negative R. One thing that you can um, think about is any time you see um, I, any time you see I to the first power, then your answer is just I. But if you see I to the second power, it becomes a negative 1. All right, because what you're looking at is the square root of a negative 1 and the square root of a negative 1. Square root cancels out squared. So these two right here, and you can just go ahead and put to memory, because this negative 1 you will use a lot. Um, later on in um, more advanced math classes, you will find out that there are two more. You can say x i cubed and i to the fourth. But I squared is normally where we stop in algebra 2. So I want to go ahead and say let's solve um, 3x squared minus 1 equals a negative 16. The first thing we want to do is get everything away um, that we can away from what's attached to our x. So we have 3 x squared. All of that is attached. So we want to go ahead and get rid of this negative 1. So the way to get rid of it on one side is to go ahead and do the opposite of it on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and say 3x squared minus 1 plus 1 equals a negative 16 plus 1. So we can go ahead and simplify. A negative 16 plus 1 is a negative 15. All right, again, the next thing we want to do is get rid of the whole number that is attached to our x. So we're going to divide by 3 and divide by 3. So now we have x squared equals a negative 5. Now, the way to get rid of your, square, your squared is by doing square root. And so I'm going to say um, square root of x squared equals a plus or minus square root of a negative 5 because... With it being an even exponent, it's going to be a positive and negative answer. So now I see that I have a negative, and because of the properties up here, we can say now we have plus or minus i square root 5. 
and that is your answer to uh, 3x squared minus 1 minus 16. The next concept that we want to discuss is um, the sums and differences of complex numbers. We remember that the word sum lets us know that we're going to add, and the word difference lets us know we're going to subtract. Just like um, when we have our um, 3x plus 2x, um, we're going to do the same thing with our um, complex numbers as we do with our x's. Um, and what that is, is when we see um, whole numbers with our eyes, we only add the whole numbers. So for example, um, I'm going to have a sum, which is um, a plus bi plus um, c plus di can be written as a plus c plus b plus d i. Again, all they're doing is adding the whole numbers. My a goes to my c and my b goes to my d. i stays on the outside. So for the difference, this time we have A plus BI minus C plus DI. Now on this one, you've got to remember that this negative sign gets distributed to the C and the DI. So therefore we have A minus C, and then we can say plus B minus D I. And those are the two um, rules as far as uh, the sums and differences of complex numbers. So let's go ahead and try to um, work these um, concepts out. We have um, 4 plus 2 I plus 1 plus I equals. Now based on our sum form, we can say my A is 4, my B is 2, my C is 1, and my D. Remember, anytime you have just a variable, just a um, letter, you can say 1 times that letter. So there's my D. And so I'm going to come up here to this form, and I'm now going to say 4 plus 1, I'm rewriting it where my A and C are together, plus my B and D are together, and then my I on the outside. 4 plus 1 gives us 5, and then 2 plus 1 gives us 3, and then again I, I go ahead and place my I. So the answer is 5 plus 3I. So let's go ahead and try a difference. So I have a negative 4 minus 6i minus 3 plus 2i. Again, I want to go ahead and uh, make sure that I remember where my, my, my numbers from, I'm, I'm sorry, my letters from up here are. So I'm going to say here's my a, here's my b, here's my c, and, and here's my d. I'm going to rewrite it. And again, we got to remember that this negative gets distributed to the 3 and the 2. So I can rewrite and say a negative 4, which is my A, minus 3. Um, and then I also have um, plus my B, which is a negative 6, minus, because a, a minus and a positive, minus 2, I. So a negative 4 minus 3 gives me a negative 7. And then a negative 6 minus 2 gives me a negative 8. And again, I place my I. So again, all we've done is we've looked at our um, forms, A plus BI plus C plus DI. And we added the whole numbers that are by themselves. And then we added the whole numbers that are attached to the I. want to um, look at today is multiplying complex numbers. 
When we see our multiplication here, we see that we have two sets of parentheses. Um, that lets me know that I want to FOIL. Remember, FOIL is um, first, outer, inner, and last. My FOIL. And so I want to say a negative 8 times 2 gives me a negative 16. A negative 8 times a positive 4i gives me a negative 32i. A negative 3i times a positive 2 is a negative 6i. And then a negative 3i times a positive 4i is a negative 12i squared. What I want to do now is go ahead and combine like terms. So I can go ahead and bring down my 16, my negative 16, and I can see that I have a negative 32i and a negative 6i. So I can combine those into a negative 38i. Now, what did we discuss about i squared? i squared is always a negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as a negative 1. Now, what I need to do is say, okay, well, a negative 12 times a negative 1 gives me a positive 12. And then I bring, my, bring down my negative 16 and my negative 38i. At this point, all we do is combine like terms. I have a negative 16 and a positive 12. When you add those together, you get a negative 4 minus 38i. And that is how you multiply your complex numbers. So far, we have um, learned how to add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers. Now we're going to look at how to divide the complex numbers. Now keep in mind that in our vocabulary, we talked about the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate lets us know that this denominator that we have, 3 plus 8i, the complex conjugate of it is going to be 3 minus 8i. So we are going to um, multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of 3 plus 8i, which is, again, 3 minus 8i over 3 minus 8i. The next thing you want to do after you go ahead and um, show that you're going to multiply top and bottom is you have to think about FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, because that's what this is. We have first times first, 15 times 3 gives us, I'm, I'm sorry, 5 times 3 gives us 15. And then I have outer times outer, 5 times a negative 8 gives me a negative 40i. Inner times inner, which gives me a negative 2i times a positive 3 is a negative 6i. And then a negative 2i times a negative 8i gives me a positive 16i squared. The next thing I want to do The next thing I want to do is um, the, um, go ahead and foil the bottom. 3 times 3 gives us 9. 3 times a negative 8i gives us a negative 24i. 8, um, 8i times 3i gives me a positive 24i. And then 8i times a negative 8i gives us a negative 64i squared. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and reduce, or I'm sorry, let's go ahead and combine like terms first. All right, so up top I have 15, um, and then a minus 40 plus, uh, plus a negative 6 is minus 46i, and then um, we have our 16i squared, but what does i squared mean? That means times a negative 1. Down below in the denominator we have 9. This negative 24i plus 24i gives us nothing, 
And so I can go ahead and say minus 64, and again, my I squared lets us know negative 1. So now what I want to do is 15 um, minus one, 16, because 16 times a negative 1, that gives me a negative 1 minus 46i over, this becomes a positive 64 because a minus times a negative, and so we have um, over 73. So I can rewrite this as one, oh, a negative 1 over 73 minus 46 over 73i. The last co uh, concept we want to talk about today is plotting complex numbers and finding the absolute value of the complex number. And so the first thing I want to do is plot the negative 6 plus 8i. When we think about our coordinate plane, we think about the x is what goes left and right and the y is what goes up and down. When we plot the, um, a complex number, our negative 6, which is our a, goes left and right on the x-axis. So I'm going to go over a negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I have a positive 8. And again, your 8 is your y, what would be the y-axis. So we're going to go up 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And again, I'm going to move over. And so there's my plotted point of a negative 6 plus 8i. Again, your negative 6, which is your a, is your um, left and right. Your 8 is your b, which is up and down on your coordinate plane. And then to find the absolute value of this same equation, we do the square root of a squared plus b squared. And remember that our negative 6 is our a, and our 8 is our b. And so I can go ahead and rewrite and say the square root of a negative 6 squared plus 8 squared. And a negative 6 squared is 36. And an 8 squared is 64. When we add those together, 36 plus 64, it gives us 100. And then the square root of 100, which means what number times what number equals 100. And so we can say that it is 10. So 10 is our absolute value of this complex number, negative 6 plus 8i.